My name is Jennifer Brave, and today I'm gonna to be doing a video on how to tell if you might be an Enneagram type four. If there is a pattern of people accusing you of being difficult, perhaps to live with, to work with, to reason with, to solve problems with, if people are always complaining that you're too stubborn, too emotional, you're making too big a deal out of it, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you enjoy feeling sad, or actually a better way to say it would be if you enjoy feeling melancholy, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you've always had this sense that you're alone or misunderstood, even in a group of people, and perhaps sometimes even within your own family or at work with your friends, if you've just always kind of had this feeling like you're different and other people aren't capable of fully understanding you, you might be an Enneagram type four. Honesty time. If criticism, constructive or otherwise, if rejection of any kind completely obliterates your ego, if that is something that just crushes you, like you can't handle it, it's very overwhelming. And specifically, if you just kind of maybe go into like a woe is me, depressed mode, I don't wanna be around anybody, nobody wants me around. In other words, if there's a huge emotional reaction to just the tiniest critiques, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you refuse to work with other people, and by that, I don't mean you aren't a team player. I mean that if you're aware that your name is going to be put on something, you wanna be the only one that's working on it because you don't want to have your name affiliated with somebody else's work because if their work isn't something that really represents you, you don't want your name attached to it. So if you really like working alone simply because you wanna be able to maintain the creative control over what you're doing, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you refuse to go along with what is socially expected or what might be considered the social norm, not necessarily because you're trying to be a rebellious person or you wanna cause problems, but because in your mind, it's stupid to conform to something just because everybody else is doing it. If you choose to be true to yourself, even if that means being socially inappropriate or socially ostracized, you might be an Enneagram type four. Honesty time. If you invent negative situations in your head, in other words, if you weave together memories of things that haven't happened, specifically in instances of social interaction, and I'll give you some examples. If you go out and, I don't know, go to a party or something, and then you spend the next few days kind of feeling anxious because you feel like you made a comment to somebody and for whatever reason you feel like they didn't like it and you just kind of got it worked up in your head that they don't like me, they're not gonna wanna talk to me again if we wind up at the same party again. I embarrassed myself, they're probably telling everybody about what kind of an idiot I am. If you're just assuming that everybody doesn't like you, that nobody wants you around, that you're gonna be rejected, if any of that applies to you, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you are a hopeless romantic or a dreamer, if you fantasize a lot about a life that could have come out of a Hallmark movie or something. So for example, if you dream about finding the one and you fall in love and they sweep you off your feet and you can have your dream career and they can have their dream career and everything's just gonna be hunky-dory. If those are the kind of things that you fantasize about and maybe even to some degree expect out of life, you might be an Enneagram type four. If life is just always boring for you, you want something new, something exciting, you might be an Enneagram type four. Honesty time again. 
if you don't hold up well under pressure or if you get discouraged really easily when you fail or something just doesn't go the way that you wanted it to go, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you take the way that you look very seriously, and by that I mean if your physical appearance is a way that you express yourself. So if you're one of those, my body is a canvas type of people, for some fours, it could be having green hair. For other fours, it could be facial piercings. For other fours, perhaps, I'll give a more practical example. If a four owns their own business, perhaps every time they leave the house, they've got a t-shirt on that's got their business logo on it. They've got maybe a keychain with their business logo. They've got some way that they're representing this business that they identify with and that they're proud of. Or it could be, in the case of my dad, he really liked old movies. He very specifically liked spaghetti westerns. That was just what he identified with and he thought that he was a unique and interesting person because he was interested in these really old movies and TV shows that other people aren't typically interested in. So he would spend lots of money and buy these really old but very nice leather jackets and coats, like what I call cowboy jackets, very similar to what you would see in these like really old spaghetti western movies and TV shows. And that was his thing. He would get his boots to match and he spent a lot of money on that. And so that was his form of self-expression. So in other words, when he wanted to present himself, he wanted people to see him and know that he loved him some fucking spaghetti westerns. I mean, you know, it's different for every four, but those are just some examples. So if you use your external appearance as a way to say to the world, this is who I am, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you consider yourself to be a loner, or perhaps not even that, if you just consider yourself to be independent, in other words, you're not necessarily a leader that other people are trying to emulate. But at the same time, you're not a follower either because you don't want to be like anyone else. You kind of want to be your own person and leave your own mark on the world. You might be an Enneagram type four. If you really value self-improvement and you're very internally focused, if you are the sort of person that loves to buy all the self-help books, if you like the Enneagram, if you're really interested in stuff like that, just psychology and things that you could use to help yourself become more aware of who you are and then become a better person, you might be an Enneagram type four. If you're interested in things that just most people aren't interested in. If you're the sort of person that goes to a flea market and you find, I don't know, like a booth that sells teacups from the 1700s or some shit, and you see that and you're like, oh my God, I have to start collecting teacups from the 1700s. How cool would it be if I had people come over and I had this really cool collection of teacups from the 1700s that nobody else has had. I mean, if that's the sort of stuff that, that you like and you, and you just want to have this eclectic collection of shit, you might be an Enneagram type four. If environmental aesthetics are really important to you, so for example, if you're the sort of person that you've just moved into a new apartment or a new house, and immediately it's like, there's too much white in this room. We need to do one wall with an accent color. There's too much space on this wall. That needs to have a portrait there. We could get some custom molding to put around the ceiling, et cetera, et cetera. If you're the person that just goes in and has to have a very specific aesthetic environment, you can't just live in any environment. You need to be able to again, represent who you are in the external world. And so you want to have a living space and maybe even a working space that feels like you. You're moving in with somebody and they are, I don't know, coming in with a couch and you say, no, we're not gonna keep that couch because I'm kind of imagining a 
country style cotton motif and that couch is very much a frat house leather motif so I don't want that in this apartment or in this house because it's kind of clash with what I'm trying to do in here if, if you're that person you you might be an Enneagram type four. If you love the fact that you are different from other people or that you're misunderstood, I mean, yeah, in some instances, it's kind of hurtful and it can be anxiety producing, but really, at the end of the day, if in your core, you are proud of yourself for being misunderstood and being different, if that is your identity and you like it, you might be an Enneagram type four. Honesty time. If you believe that you are better than other people because you're different, because you're misunderstood, because you don't necessarily just do what's expected of you, because you put so much effort into your self-expression, because you are eclectic and you like weird things that most other people aren't even aware of. If you really feel like you're better than other people because of that, then you might be an Enneagram type four. If when in a romantic relationship, you quite literally on accident would murder your partner with love and affection, you might be an Enneagram type four. I dated a four once, like seriously, just constant love notes and songs and text messages and smothering. The nice thing is like I never had to question where I stood. I definitely always knew that I was loved and I was wanted and that's kind of nice. So. Anyways, if most or all of those apply to you, you might be an Enneagram type four.